So I got a lead on a Raleigh. It's full suspension and we have not yet flipped a full suspension bike. This one's kind of old, kind of outdated, but it has hydraulic disc brakes. It has rock shock suspension and all the parts are fairly good. So the fact that it's old might be a good thing because we might be able to get this for a really good deal. So let's go stare at it and make sure the shifters work and there's no tar on the frame. And nobody in any skidding contest with it. Let's go get it. Good bike. Besides a chain, it just needs a tune-up and it, we, it doesn't need any parts. He's willing to do it for 200. I would like to pay less, but I think this is a worthwhile... Dude, I think we should go ahead and do it and see where this takes us. So I got a chance to really look over this bike and it's fairly high end, at least in terms of what's on it. It's only 29 pounds, which is really light. That's lighter than my trail bike. The tires have plenty of meat on them and all around you can see that the previous owner was pretty concerned with what they put on the bike. But it's not perfect, it definitely needs some work. The brakes don't really work, they probably need a bleed. These are definitely some weird grips they put on here. The linkage is really ugly. There's not much we can do about that. I also discovered that the shifters and brakes are all built into the same lever. That's gonna present a problem if we wanna upgrade the drivetrain because it means we would also need to upgrade the brakes. That could get very expensive. Otherwise, the bike just needs a really good cleaning. So let's get it over to the wash station and dig in. So there are a bunch of black parts in the bike, like these cranks that have lots of visible scratches. And instead of repainting them, we could just touch it up with a Sharpie to make it not look as visible. But actually the better thing to do would be to use this black touch-up paint. It looks a lot more black than a Sharpie does and it's automotive grade, so it's gonna hold up really well. This isn't gonna make it look perfect, but it is gonna make it stand out less. And I think it can save us a lot of time as opposed to repainting the cranks completely. While the paint is drying, there's actually a repair we need to do to the derailleur. The little gears on the derailleur are called jockey wheels, and you can see how this one is all worn down. Here it is compared to a brand new jockey wheel, which I happen to have two of. This is gonna make the derailleur run like new, and all I have to do is unscrew the old ones and screw the new ones on, and we are done. So originally I was just gonna break down the linkage and clean everything, but upon closer inspection, quite a bit of this is janked. As you can see, this little nylon washer is just completely crushed. We can probably find that at the hardware store, but the bearings we're not gonna be able to. As you can see, when we rotate this one, it doesn't rotate smoothly. And so the solution for that is we have to buy new ones. Now, there are three different types of bearing cartridges in this, and we're gonna have to measure all of them. So sometimes you can just read the writing on the bearing and order new ones, but if you have a caliper, measure the inside diameter, the outside diameter, and then the thickness of it. And those three measurements are gonna be what bearing you need. So if you type in eight by 16 by five, you're gonna find a whole bunch of bearings. They're all pretty much the same thing. Order the one you can get the quickest, and that's what we're doing. These are not expensive. You can get a digital caliper on Amazon for like 10 bucks. One of the things that stuck out to me about this bike is how messy everything up at the fork looks. And part of that are these zip ties, but there's also the V-brake mounts, which are completely unnecessary. These posts are made to mount an older type of brake, and this bike has disc brakes, so we can just unscrew them and fill them in with some other bolt. But as I'm getting into it here, it looks like this front brake hose is in pretty bad shape. To replace it, we need to, of course, remove the old hose, measure up a new one, cut it to size, and then install new hardware onto the ends. 
The hardware is made up of barbs and olives. The barb is the interface between the lever or the caliper of the brakes, and the olive kind of seals it up. The olives just kind of slide on, and the barbs get pressed in with this special tool. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, some hose kits come with these little plastic clamps. To be honest, I don't really know what they're for, but it looks like you could use them to clamp the hose in place and then hammer the barb in yourself with a hammer. It's kind of handy. Once you have the new hose installed, of course you need to fill the system back up with brake fluid, which in this case is mineral oil or baby oil seems to work okay. We'll push it up through the bottom with a syringe, and once we know all the bubbles are out, the brakes should work like new. And without those V-brake mounts in the way, we can fashion a new clamp to get rid of those old janky zip ties. I certainly feel better with that new brake hose. I'm gonna take apart the cockpit here and see if we can make it look a little bit better. There are BMX grips on this thing. Yeah, that's what they did. There was, it's an animal BMX grip with a flange and they cut the flange off. So I have these grips. They're not anything special, but at the same time, they're not BMX grips with the flanges cut off. They look a little bit more official. The brake lever, you push the brake lever down to shift. So this is a mountain bike with brifters. So is brifter a real word? I did not make this up. Brifter is a real word that people use to describe brakes that have shifters built into them. So check this out. Let's say you're going like hard in the paint, right? Right. And you're like, oh snap, hit the turn. Instead of braking, you downshift. Yeah, there's lots of different reasons why they probably don't do this anymore. So I don't know how many times we can go through the same things, but we are truing this wheel. We're gonna make it straight by using tension on the spokes. Yeah, it looks like we opened up a little can of worms here. Hopefully we have a spoke nipple that will fit this. Yeah, this nipple fits. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna replace this nipple as well. Yeah, see, this thing is just totally destroyed. I can't even turn it. I'm just trying to get it off of the bike. That's no good. So we replaced like 85 spoke nipples. Every time one spoke pops, another one does, and then you just mar up the nipples and yeah. All is well that ends well. Let's get this back on the bike and actually put it back together. So it's Saturday and a beautiful thing just arrived, all of our bearings, but because it's Saturday, I'm on little girl duty. Here, you want a baby biscuit? Here. Alexa, play Coco Melon. Here's some music by Coco Melon. This bearing press is really handy. It just really evenly presses the bearing in. You just know 100% you're doing it right. Okay, so now I just have to remember how this goes back together. There are a lot of little bushings and things that we gotta get right. That's mommy to the rescue, and we can actually make this look like a bike now. Now to get this bike ready for listing, I'm gonna put a set of egg beaters on it and I'm gonna offer them for an additional price. People who ride XC usually have pedals that they like, so these are gonna be optional if they have a set of pedals that they would rather use. So last few finishing touches and I think we're done. We cleaned this bike up from top to bottom, we fixed some issues with the wheels, replaced all the linkage bearings. It even got to work with a set of vintage mountain bike brifters. We gave it a tune up, up and down, and now there's only one thing left to do before we list it. Stare at it.
Okay, so this is an older bike, but it's full suspension, it's very capable, and these days, something like this is gonna be hard to come by. And so I've priced it at 500. I think that's fair. I wrote, for sale is a rally full suspension cross country mountain bike sized large. If you are between 5'8 and 6 feet, this should work. This is an older 26 inch XC bike, which was really well equipped for its day. It is lighter than most of today's trail bikes and has been fully tuned up with a new chain, grips, linkage bearings, and front brake hose. The bike features RockShox air suspension in the front and rear, which are adjustable to your weight. Front and rear Shimano hydraulic disc brakes work like new and have been recently serviced. The Dior XT drivetrain shifts beautifully. For a beginner, this would be a really capable XC bike for the price. Make me an offer and let's find it a great home. So let's publish this listing and see what we get. Okay, it's Monday morning and we've gotten two strong offers. Neither person's haggling, they're just like, I want the bike. So I'm gonna meet somebody at 10, 15, and if that falls through, I can drive an hour to try and meet the other person. So I think we're gonna sell this bike today. Yeah, I'm new to riding, so. The one thing I would tell you about this bike is it's got brifters, so the brakes and shifters are all built into one. So that was easy. He's like, yeah. My, my buddies told me, find a mountain bike, try to get something full suspension, and I haven't been able to find anything at this price. So let's go home and I'll give you the breakdown. So we didn't get as good of a deal on this bike as I had originally thought, because we had to replace all the linkage bearings, we had to replace the front brake hose, we had to work on the wheels. These are not repairs that an average tinker is gonna wanna do, and so I think 500 was a good price for what he got. And so what was the breakdown? Well, those linkage bearings cost us about 15 bucks and we ended up with like literally 30 extra bearings that we can use on future builds. The chain cost us 16, grips cost us seven, and the brake hose cost us 10. There were also miscellaneous valve caps and hardware and bushings and those cost us about five. The new jockey wheels were 15 and the bottle cage was seven. We ended up spending a total of $75 in materials, and we bought the bike for $200. It sold for full asking price at $500, for a profit of $225. That is the most profit we've made by far, and I think it would be very worthwhile for anybody to do what we just did to this bike. I had multiple offers on that, and not one person was trying to haggle me. They were all very willing to pay $500 for it, and that's because you can't find a lot of decent full suspension bikes for that price. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Flip Bike. I hope you learned something. If you want to watch more of these episodes, I left a playlist below with all the other bikes we've sold. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. It's kind of like an STI shifter on your gravel bike, your road bike, when your brake lever and your shifter is in the same situation. It is a little bit like a road bike shifter where you have a brifter. What is that? A brifter, where it's a brake and a shifter. Is so it, this is, is a so this is a mountain bike with brifters. So is a, brif, a brifter a real word? It's, it's, tri, it's I didn't Are just make it up. Gonna... I did not make this up. Are you sure? I'm positive. It's a, a it's a brifter. Yeah. <laughs> the brifter.